You are looking at uh, the Lascaux Cave, uh, located in France, Lascaux, France. Uh, you are looking at one of the largest collections of Paleolithic art. There are something like 6,000 images located in Lascaux, images consisting of animals in geometric forms with uh, animals dominating the number of images visible. You are looking at the very famous Hall of the Bulls. This um, large chamber uh, contains some of the largest Paleolithic paintings in the world with the uh, image of the bull on the right uh, being the largest. This is an, a bull that is something like 11 feet, over 11 feet long, so it's basically a life-size depiction of this animal. Uh, Lasco was discovered in 1940 by a, a group of teenagers, four teenagers and their dog, a dog named Robot, who were uh, wandering around the countryside and stumbled upon the opening of the cave. Actually it was just one boy initially and then he uh, eventually got his friends uh, and then they revealed this find uh, to the public and it is uh, was at the time the largest um, of these Paleolithic caves uh, discovered. Alaska officially closed to the public in 1963. It's no longer open because of the damage that was being done by uh, people's breath and things like mold and stuff they were bringing in. The, the images started to rapidly uh, deteriorate. But what I want to focus on is the kinds of imagery that we would find in Lascaux. Like we said, it's primarily animal imagery. And the emphasis is sort of on big, powerful animals, like in most of these Paleolithic caves. We're not exactly sure what these images represent. Um, there's, uh, you know, in some cases we are looking at food source animals, as in this image of what is known as the, the Chinese horse because of its um, uh, similarities to Chinese brush painting. Um, but uh, a lot of the images, like the images of the bull, are animals that weren't necessarily eaten because they were too powerful uh, for the kinds of hunting technology that Paleolithic people had at the time. So the question is, what kind of uh, function did these images serve? Uh, well, beyond maybe recording um, different kinds of hunts, a lot of these images were probably images of spiritual animals, whether these were worshipped as gods or, um, uh, you know, used in some other sort of ceremony. We're not exactly sure, uh, but we do know by their size and by their prevalence that they were certainly important. Uh, these images were made of uh, various mineral and vegetable pigments. Occasionally there is use of charcoal. Uh, the images were uh, created by applying, um, probably with the hands, maybe uh, pieces of cloth or animal skin, uh, different pigments to the wall, using um, animal fat as a binder. There are some cases, though, where um, a, a kind of spray paint effect uh, can be seen. And this was probably applied using a reed with grinding up pigment into, uh, you know, a small granules and then blowing it through the reed onto the surface of the wall, which had probably been covered with something sticky like animal fat or maybe even saliva, and it has adhered to the wall. The fascinating thing to me about um, Lascaux is... Um, Although it is primarily uh, um, contains imagery of animals, there are some images of humans, uh, but these tend to be rather abstract. When you compare the image of the human here, this image of this person who has been uh, wounded by this animal and the animal itself has been wounded probably by the human with, you can see its intestines hanging out um, from its abdomen. And next to the human is this small, uh, sort of bird-topped staff. Uh, we're not really sure what we're looking at, but what's fascinating to me is the abstraction. Uh, abstraction means a reduction from reality, uh, a removal from reality, a simplification from reality. So the more abstract human figure compared to the more lifelike animal figure is striking. And when you look at some of the other images uh, from Lascaux, the realism 
or naturalism of the animals is evident. Um, so we need to question why humans were viewed in this more abstract and less lifelike way. Um, is it because the animals were somehow more real? Uh, is it because they were represented elemental or primal forces, uh, spiritual forces, uh, and, and thus um, deserved more reference, which was portrayed through realism? We don't know. We're dealing with prehistory. This is the problem, guys. Um, we don't know. Nobody wrote this stuff down. They were so rude. Uh, they were rude enough not to invent language yet for us. So um, we don't know. We can only take guesses. Uh, but there has to be some sort of significance between the relative realism of the animals and, and the and sort of uh, crude abstraction of the human figures. Uh, something else that's fascinating about Lascaux is if we compare the realism between some, but with some older caves, uh, what we find is something rather kind of striking. Uh, you are looking here at a cave that is significantly older uh, than Lascaux. Uh, this is a cave that dates uh, somewhere around 30,000 BCE. Uh, this is a cave called Chevet. And if you compare uh, the imagery from, from Chevet with Lascaux, you'll see something remarkable. Look at the bulls on the image of the left of uh, Chevet, the much older cave. And what you'll see is uh, images of the horns in profile in a very realistic uh, way. Uh, this is what we would call a perceptual image, meaning that this replicates the way the eye perceives the world. Uh, we perceive the world in three dimensions, and when we look at a, a bull in profile, we would see its horns, well, exactly like this, uh, sort of one in front of the other. But when you look at Lascaux, the newer image by 15,000 years-ish or so, uh, you'll notice something remarkably different. The, the bull's uh, horns are shown um, conceptually, um, or what we call a composite image, meaning that um, the head of the bull is composited from two different angles. The bull's head is seen in profile, but its horns are both seen as if we are looking at them sort of from the front, or really more like a three-quarters angle. So you're seeing kind of two percept, uh, two perceptions superimposed over each other. So we're not really seeing a perceptual image of, the, of a bull. We are seeing a conceptual image of the bull, meaning that this is how you would think of a bull. When you think of horns, you think of them facing towards us and being able to see both horns at once. Uh, so even if the bull's head is shown in profile, um, its horns are shown as if they were facing us, so as we conceive of them, and not as we perceive them. What is the reason for this? Why was there a moving away uh, from this more perceptual, realistic image as we see on the left, and this more conceptual image on the right? I don't know. Um, but there was a significant change in the way our ancient Paleolithic ancestors viewed the world.